All right, gang, it's on. Senator Josh Hawley announces he will indeed object to Biden electors on January 6th. In this video, we're going to take a look at Senator Hawley's statement officially announcing his attempt to block Biden from the White House, how this is the first domino to fall promising virtually all Republicans to follow suit and reject Biden, and why we can now be confident that all the evidence surrounding the compromise integrity of this election will finally be made known to the entire nation. You are not going to want to miss this. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. A continued Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. The happiest of New Year's. Dr. Steve Turley here, ready to bring you our latest episode, celebrating the inevitable collapse of left-wing globalism and the unstoppable rise of a new conservative age. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a regular part of this channel where each and every day, we focus on optimism and encouragement in the midst of all the defeatist fake news nonsense spewed out by the mainstream media. Before we begin, you know, we've all experienced blackouts, particularly at night. You know, that bizarre feeling when the power grid goes out and our homes go completely dark. What do we do? What do we do? <laughs> I'm preparing for my next blackout with a wonderful device called the light bug. The light bug is a portable solar powered ultra bright floodlight with three lighting modes. And because it's solar powered, you'll never ever have to worry about wires or batteries. And it comes with a battery indicator so you know how much charge is left. It's perfect to light up your fishing, your hiking, or camping trips because it's so lightweight and portable. And as part of their extended policy for the holidays, if you click on that link below, you get 20% off. So what can possibly be better? Make sure to click on that link below or head on over to lightbug.com and get your emergency backup light today. All right, let's dive right in here. Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri has announced that he is going to formally object to Biden's electors on January 6th in Washington, D.C. As such, Hawley is the first senator to announce that he will attempt to block Biden's electors, particularly in states where the election continues to be contested. In a written statement, Hawley wrote, and I quote, I cannot vote to certify the Electoral College results on January 6th without raising the fact that some states, particularly Pennsylvania, fail to follow their own state election laws. And I cannot vote to certify without pointing out the unprecedented effort of mega corporations, including Facebook and Twitter, to interfere in this election in support of Joe Biden. At the very least, Congress should investigate allegations of voter fraud and adopt measures to secure the integrity of our elections. But Congress has so far failed to act. Following both the 2004 and 2016 elections, Democrats in Congress objected during the certification of electoral votes in order to raise concerns about election integrity. They were praised by Democratic leadership and the media when they did, and they were entitled to do so. But now, those of us concerned about the integrity of this election are entitled to do the same. Hear, hear. Now, obviously, this is a slap in the face of Senate Majority Leader uh, Mitch McConnell who has uh, done everything he possibly can to prevent any Republican senator from doing precisely what Josh Hawley just did. And there's a reason for that. McConnell knows that once one Republican stepped up to announce that he or she was going to object to Biden's electors, he knows that the dam will break. Virtually every Republican will vote for Trump. They have to or their political careers are over. Gang, make no mistake. This is going to be the single most contested election in American history, or at least since 1876. They didn't know who was going to be president, I believe, until March of that year. The election was so uh, contested in 1876. So we ain't seen nothing yet. Representative Matt Gates has announced that Republicans in the House will indeed challenge the electors. Representative Gates is joining Mo Brooks from Alabama and a number of other Republicans who are going to force a vote in the House on the integrity of this election. In many respects, I mean, this really started with House Republican Mo Brooks. I mean, he led the charge in the House, calling on his fellow congressional Republicans to sign on to his effort and challenge the certification of the Electoral College's vote on January 6th. And now that Josh Hawley has joined forces with them in the Senate, the dam is going to break, gang. Now, every single Republican is going to have to vote against Biden. If they don't, their political future is dead. It is dead as of January 6th. They will be primaried and they will lose. 
There's no way around that. So while you uh, certainly you can expect the never Trumpers in the Senate, like Mittens Romney and Susan Collins to vote against Trump on the 6th, everyone else, every other Republican will risk losing their political careers, most particularly someone like Lisa Murkowski of Alaska. They're going to get primaried if they refuse to stand up for President Trump. So this is going to be the most single contested election since 1876. In many ways, it already is. So a huge shout out to Josh Hawley. What an amazing patriot. Now, the key to all of this is that it is a forcing function to put the facts in front of the American people. The mainstream media has done everything they possibly can up to this point. Yes, that includes the gutless, feckless Fox News, faux news. They've been doing everything they possibly can to dismiss this, to reject this, to ignore this. I can't even begin to count how many so-called news articles I had to read through over the past several weeks that qualify every one of President Trump's statements about the fraud in this election as baseless, right? That's the common uniform refrain. President Trump's baseless accusations. I mean, for heaven's sakes, you've got the New York Post just the other day running the headline, stop the insanity, give it up, Mr. President, for your sake in the nation. I mean, do you notice how much the media and these feckless Republican politicians always side with gutless mediocrity? I mean, there's never a call to boldness, to courage, to heroism. No, it's always it's always a call to concede, to forfeit, uh, to sit in the corner, to yield to the supposed fickle public opinion that is itself fabricated by left-wing activists disguised as journalists. You're embarrassing yourself, Mr. President. You're embarrassing yourself. I mean... That's all we've been treated to by the mainstream Marxist media for weeks now. But now, to their embarrassment, now they have to cover all the evidence that we've been presenting for the last several weeks. Both the Senate and the House are required to debate for two hours per state objected to. And so far, we're looking at six contested states, perhaps even more. That's at least 12 hours of debate. So the objection in the House and the Senate is forcing is a forcing function to begin to bring the evidence before the American people, the majority of whom believe that the integrity of this election was indeed compromised. They already believe that. So now the mainstream media is going to have to be forced to cover all the evidence presented by the Senate and House Republicans. And make no mistake, this can go on for several days. So it is showtime. Now, of course, we're under no illusions. The media will continue to mock and ridicule and dismiss and accuse every single one of these Republicans of political suicide. Just like the New York Post, they'll all sing the chorus of, let it go, let it go, (laughs) just admit you lost. However, as they prove themselves to be more hecklers than reporters, I want you to remember something. But first, I do want to personally invite you to our exclusive New Year's virtual conference on January 9th, 2021, To help you feel prepared for the year ahead, we've got some awesome guest speakers lined up. We've got Pennsylvania State Senator Doug Mastriano. He's going to be with us. Senator Mastriano got the ball rolling by spearheading the Gettysburg hearings. He was recently at the White House. He's he's confirmed President Trump is more determined than ever to win this thing. So Senator Mastriano will be with us, as well as Ian Smith, the New Jersey gym owner, defying their governor's tyrannical lockdown orders. So we're bringing you the amazing patriots who are fighting on the front lines for you and for me. Now, seating for the conference is limited. Seats are going fast. And to make it even better, you can save 30% off your registration as part of our New Year's special. So don't wait. Make sure to click on that link below. Take advantage of our New Year's registration special. It's about to end. And you'll be glad to know that a portion of the proceeds will go to Good Neighbors Home Repair. So not only are you going to be blessed by this event, but you're going to bless others with your registration as well. So do not wait. Click on that link below and register now for our New Year's virtual conference today. All right. So here's what I want you to remember through all the jeers and the sneers coming from the hecklers in the mainstream media. The greatest fear of every one of these mainstream media cowards, and make no mistake, they are cowards. They travel in packs, in gangs. They don't have the gall to produce a single original thought. Their greatest fear is that a number of politicians and activists will rise up who don't give a rip about their reputations as defined by the mainstream media.
That's their greatest fear because they know that's the day the edifice falls. That's the day corporatist globalist world of which the mainstream media and neocon Republicans, the great cowardly defenders, begins to really collapse. When a whole slew of politicians and activists, all united by their common despising of the political class, take their inspiration from President Trump and rise up and stare down these feckless, gutless calls to stop embarrassing yourself, they know that's the day this all ends. The globalist nightmare comes to an end. And people like Senator Hawley and Representative Mo Brooks are standing up and saying to the media, we don't care if we're seen as embarrassments in the eyes of a bunch of liars and frauds. We don't care. President Trump doesn't care. He never cared about how he's viewed by the morally myopic gaze of leftist globalist apologists. And I'm ecstatic to see that more and more Republican senators like Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz and Rand Paul share the same boldness and courage. They don't care what the cowards at CNN think. They don't care what the faux conservatives over at Fox think. They don't care what Carl Rove thinks or Geraldo Rivera or anyone else with an incurable case of inflated self-importance. They're standing up for the deplorables, for the men and women who get up every morning and make this country work, for people who don't think they get their way by burning down buildings and tearing down statues and disparaging and deriding our nation and its history and its culture, customs, and traditions. These are the people who are told by our health inspectors to shut down their businesses during the COVID lockdown and go back home and just deal with it. All the while, those same government officials, they send out monthly checks to a permanent underclass that's given them totalizing Democrat monopolies in virtually every urban metropolitan area, four of which gave Joe Biden his radically suspect so-called victory. And these bureaucrats would love to go back to pre-2016 conditions. They would love to go back to the days when deplorables felt like no one cared about them. But those days are over. The deplorables are now the heart and the soul of the new nationalist populist Republican Party. And I'm ecstatic to see people like Josh Hawley rise up and say, I'm one of them. In the midst of all the jeers and ridicule and heckling and the Marxists and the mainstream media, in the midst of all the scoffing and dismissive contempt from the Mittens Romney Republicans, we are seeing senators rise up. We're seeing representatives rise up and say, I am one of them. I'm a deplorable. I love my nation. I love its history. I love its ideals. I love its law enforcement. I love the citizens who wake up every morning and make the country work. I love the thousands of counties governed by faith, family, and freedom. And I refuse to allow the absurd antics of cowardly, cosmopolitan, gutless globalists define my reputation and whether or not I'm worthy of esteem in their eyes. The only opinion of my character that matters to me is the opinion of my family, my faith, my community, the deplorables. They are the only ones whose opinion of my character matters to me. That's the kind of leadership that we need in our nation. And that's the kind of leadership that Senator Josh Hawley is demonstrating. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below and subscribe to my channel. And you'll definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded. It was our live stream last night on how a new lawsuit is indeed trying to force Vice President Mike Pence to reject Biden's electors. You're not going to want to miss that. So make sure to click on the link and I will see you over there. God bless.